You have probably heard about the Visual Studio for Mac retirement that will happen in about a year if we're talking about support. But for .NET 8, for example, there will be no more development. And you also maybe have seen my video about my thoughts about the retirement and how to get started with Visual Studio Code and the MAUI extension. In this video, I will take a look at JetBrains Rider and how to use that for MAUI development. I have not used Rider that much before. I have tried it a few times, but um, never had it like my full-time IDE. And I never used it for .NET MAUI development. So my idea here is to go and try out Rider and see what I think is about it. One important thing when you're trying out new tools or IDEs and software is that you always need some time to get used to it. I mean, I've used Visual Studio for many years, both the Windows version and the Mac version, so I know exactly how to do everything. And I will not do that with Rider, but we'll give it a chance. So let's go and open it. So here we have the welcome dialog for Rider. I've just installed it. I already have the .NET MAUI workload and .NET SDK and stuff like that installed. And the same with Xcode and Android emulators. So I don't need to do that now. So the first thing we need to do is to go and create a new solution. Or we can open a current one if we want to, of course. But uh, let's go and see how the create new project experience is. Okay, here we have the new solution dialog. Um, and we have a lot of templates here, empty solutions, class library, console library, unit test project, MAUI, iOS, Mac Catalyst. Okay, let's go with MAUI. So my first thought here is that it's a lot of text and a little bit hard to find it. If you compare with the Visual Studio for Mac, for example, that you have a lot of more padding and space, and I think that is easier to read, but I also think that is something that you will get used to when you have used Rider for a while. Okay, so .NET MAUI is what we're here for. Solution name, project name, nothing to say about that. Uh, put solution and product in the same directory, we have that in Visual Studio 2, we can create a Git repository. You can see what templates we have here, we have .NET MAUI app, Blazor app, Blazor app preview, I don't really know what that is. Maybe a preview version of .NET, but I don't think I have any of that installed right now. I had .NET 8 RC, I think, but I removed it. So, but we can try with .NET MAUI app first. So language, C sharp and .NET 7. So we go and press create. So here we have the open solution in Rider. We have the Solution Explorer here to the left. I guess we can move it around if we want to, but if you have used Visual Studio for Mac or Visual Studio Code, you're used to have it to the left. And if you take a look up here, we can see that we have different runner configurations. We have Android, we have Apple and phone, and we have Apple and Window. That should be Mac Catalyst. So we can see if we can run it on there. So. Here we can debug the app or we can just run it. So let's use the debugger because that's what we want to do in most cases. At least I do that. I always run the debugger when I run an app during development. So I guess this will take a bit of time the first time because it will always do that when compiling a .NET MAUI app for the first time. So here we have the .NET MAUI app. Let's see if we can debug it too. So we go to main page saml.cs and we set the breakpoint here in um, on counter clicked. Yeah, it works as it should in an ID, of course. But we can always test the debug experience. Yeah, it seems to work pretty good. So can we run this on iOS and have the different simulators. Yes, we can. Here we have the iPhone 14 or iPhone 14 Plus that comes from what you have installed with Xcode. So that's nice. So let's see the Android side. How can we work with the SDK? Because that's a big thing if you're working with um, Android development, you need to install and update different version of the SDK. 
And that's one thing that you don't have in VS Code right now. So if you don't want to install Android Studio and you don't have Visual Studio for Mac, you need to do that with CLI. I saw that there were some extensions uh, for Visual Studio Code, but non official ones. So I hope Microsoft will do something to, to make it easier to handle Android SDK. But let's see if we can find that here in Rider, if they have an SDK manager, for example. So let's go to settings. Uh, language and frameworks, Android SDK. Yes, here we have it. Here we can see different SDK platforms, what we have installed, where we have updates, we have SDK tools. And if you have used Visual Studio for Mac, this is very similar. And it's also similar to what you have in, uh, in Android Studio. So that's good. Can we see if we have something to handle emulators as well? So if we select Android here as a configuration, let's see here. Yeah, we can have a device manager. Okay, that's good. That means that we can create a virtual devices inside of the writer. So let's create device. Yeah, here we have that familiar dialogue as well. Okay, that's nice. I appreciate that. So what about editing platform specific uh, files like the info P list, for example, before you can do that pretty good in Visual Studio for Mac, but in later versions, they say that we should use Xcode. So we up and open up platforms folder, iOS and double click info P list. Yeah, seems like a pretty good editor for that. We can add keys and we will have IntelliSense here. What we, keys we can add. Okay, that's good. Uh, we can open the Android manifest and see how that looks. Yes, just XML editor. And I think that is pretty good in some way because often you want to edit that way, not have an UI. At least I prefer to write it in XML because if you find something on the internet, how to do stuff, it's XML. And also you have intelligence here. So that's good. I wonder how they will handle a storyboard. Let's see if we can create one. So add the storyboard, name my storyboard. Yeah, add it to git. Okay. Here we have it like this in XML. That's probably not how you want to edit the storyboard. That's one thing that I like with the earlier version of the Visual Studio for Mac and Xamarin Studio is that the storyboard tool was actually pretty good. In some cases it was even easier to use than the Xcode editor. Let's see if we can open it in Xcode in an easy way. Yes, we have opened in Xcode. Um, using default Xcode open generator. Here we have some error. Expect the end of line. It's, but found class name. Okay, I don't really know what that is. But you can probably work around that if you want to open it open it in Xcode. So let's try the SAML experience. How the, will it be to edit SAML here? Do we have hot reload, for example? We can go to settings and see if we find something about that, if there are something we need to enable or not. Language and frameworks. Advanced settings tools, maybe. File watchers, yeah, I can probably use that. Android. SAML Preview, enable SAML Preview for VPF. No, it's not a VPF app, it's a MAUI app. Okay, but let's open um, an iOS simulator, for example, and see what happens if we do changes to the SAML. So here we have the iOS simulator, so we can make it side by side with the editor. So we go and open main page at SAML. And we say instead, welcome to Rider and see if it updates. Yeah, it works and it was pretty fast also. That's good. I like that they have hot reload. You had that in Visual Studio for Mac, even if it doesn't work perfectly every time, but I don't know if it will do that in Rider either because I'm not 
use it that long so I can say something about that, but it seems promising, I will say. I wonder if um, C-sharp hot reload will work too. It will not do that with um, with um, Visual Studio for Mac. I don't think it will work with Visual Studio for Windows either. So we do count plus plus twice for every click. So we remove the breakpoint and we click there. Clicked one time, two times. No, it will not work with C-sharp hot reload, but SAML hot reload works. And that's good. I think that is what we want as uh, app developers, because it's really great to have the opportunity to edit SAML and see the result more or less direct. So what is my conclusion about the .NET Rider? Yeah, it seems to be a very good IDE. There are a lot of things that you're not used to as a Visual Studio for Mac user. But I guess if I use it for weeks, a month, I will probably like it more and more because I see that all the features are there. In my opinion, it's a little bit messy. Visual Studio for Mac had more padding and things like that that I like. I can have that feeling when I'm using Visual Studio on Windows as well if you compare to the Mac version, even if I think Rider is a bit worse. But uh, I think you will get used to that and you can probably do a lot of customizations in there too also. So if you don't want to use Visual Studio code or use Visual Studio for Windows in a virtual machine, you should definitely check out Rider. One problem is this is a third part application. So it's not the same company developing both the Maui and developing the IDE. But I think they do a pretty good job. But if you already paid for a Visual Studio subscription, you maybe don't want to pay for Rider as well. But maybe you can just use Rider instead. We can go and check out the pricing. So here we have the pricing for Rider. And if you have a yearly billing, so 149 uh, euros for Rider. Dot Ultimate with other tools included, you have 169 euros. Seems like they don't have a community license because this is for individual users. You can have organizations here as well and then it's a bit more expensive. I don't really know what the difference is. See if we can figure that out. Business or individual? A commercial license is the standard licensing option for organization and business entities. Licenses are purchased by the company and can be used by any single person within this organization. Okay, that means that you can move the license between person. A personal license is an option for private individuals who purchase a license with their own funds and solely for their own use. Personal licenses are not to be purchased, re refund, or in any way financed by companies. Okay, so if you work for a company, you need to buy the organization license. If you compare that with Visual Studio, they will have a community license that you can use both for individual use and also for small organizations. So in that case, Visual Studio is much cheaper. But if you are a big organization with a development team, this is probably not that much money, especially if you don't have to buy Visual Studio subscription. If you are a Visual Studio user that loves uh, ReSharper, maybe Go With Writer can be a good option for you. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, press the like button. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, please do that. See you next time. Bye bye.